Hello, my fellow geeks. Welcome to another Men Geek TV's Weekly Geek. So today I actually want to talk about um, epigenetics. And so this is something that I've been fascinated about for a long time. I have done intensive studies in what we call nutrigenomics, where we take the epigenome or the part of the genome that can be influenced by our lifestyle and see what nutrition and lifestyle changes can help positively influence them. And so the epigenome means above the gene, right? These are like the dials and switches that turn the genes off and on. And to me, it is like the, the Shangri-La of preventative medicine. It really is. I love this tool to be able to prevent diseases in the future. Like this is my genius zone is preventative care and understanding somebody's epigenetic blueprint is such a powerful tool. A lot of people get worried when they think of somebody looking at their epigenetics or you discovering your epigenetics and thinking, oh, I'm predisposed to cancer and I'm predisposed to Alzheimer's or dementia or MS. Well, newsflash, we're all predisposed to it, whether it's in your genetics or not. Like this is a world where we need to be constantly diligent about detoxing and preventing horrible diseases from taking hold in us. With this epigenetic blueprint, I see it more as a tool. You know, when I give somebody a write-up and a piece of paper that really explains what they could be predisposed to, then people take action. More than any other way of really hitting home to people is that they go, oh, I see it. I see it on paper. I see, you know, you can watch your parents' age or your grandparents' age and see what happens in their life and see what kind of diseases they're prone to. Or you can also kind of get the memo ahead of time. And then the cool thing about nutrigenomics is then with these tools, we can prevent this from happening just because it's there in your epigenome. Let's say you have the VDR, the vitamin D receptor polymorphism, that mutation that makes it that you can't absorb vitamin D. Yes, you are more prone to breast cancer or certain hormone cancers because vitamin D protects you from that. But then we know that you have that mutation. And so we actually give you all the tools to help you absorb vitamin D better, whether it's vitamin K2, magnesium, you know, really combining the D so it works really well. And then knowing how to keep testing you in your blood to make sure that your D levels are optimal. And so to me, it's actually an amazing tool because knowing that you might have, let's say you have the HLA and that makes you predisposed to leaky gut, then you know you shouldn't do wheat. Or let's say you have one of the cytochrome P450s, the CYP1A2, then you're more prone to aflatoxin B1, which is in peanuts. And so you should avoid peanuts. And so there's so many answers within your specific epigenetic blueprint. It is so exciting. And I want to utilize this to empower people to actually have longevity and not only to live a long life, but to feel good. And so I encourage people to do it. I think it is the most powerful tool for preventive medicine that I know. So I wanted to share that with you because I just find it fascinating. And I know a lot of people have heard about MTHFR. MTHFR, it's all about um, methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase enzyme. And that's all over the news. Everybody wants to know about MTHFR. It's only one SNP. It's only one single nucleotide polymorphism, one mutation. You are a complex being of hundreds of mutations, and we all have them, and it makes our character right? There are actually, strangely enough, some reasons why we got these mutations. For example, COMT. You know, I have the COMT 
SNP and COM T makes you prone to magnesium deficiency. But these people are very creative. They're um, the light sleepers, the ones in the tribe that knew when danger was coming. They were intuitives, right? But they're prone to anxiety. And knowing that, you know, there's a reason why these mutations happen. Maybe it was a survival thing. But having that doesn't mean that it's a bad thing or a good thing. It's, it is just who you are and learning to work within your blueprint. Having your epigenetics understood is actually your foundation. It's your blueprint that then you can build your lifestyle and your diet based on that blueprint. And going back to MTHFR, yes, it is very predominant. You know, it's almost 50% of the population. And it has to do with the body's ability to turn folate from foliage, from leafy greens, into methylfolate in our body. So it's an enzymatic pathway. And so then we become folate deficient if we don't have that. And folic acid is actually inflammatory to people who have this. And of course, there's tons of folic acid in all our bread products, in all our vitamins. And so for people who have this mutation, it's hard for them to metabolize this. And so maybe it's because we have so much folic acid in our food that this is why the mutation is so predominant. I don't know. It's a possibility. But the fact of the matter is knowing this, knowing if you have that MTHFR, mutation, then you know, like, I should avoid folic acid. I should do folinic acid or methylfolate or just folate. Like, there's so many great tools that then you can utilize by understanding your blueprint. So that's just what I wanted to share today. And I hope you enjoy your day. I'll see you next time on The Weekly Geek. Bye.